everyone, this is Devon Joshi. I'm the web administrator for the Johnsonian, and here's a quick little demo of Windows 8, uh, Microsoft's new operating system uh, that they released to developers uh, just this past week. Um, so just to let you know how I'm going to be showing you Windows 8 is I'm going to be using a program called VM Fusion. Um, it's uh, free with a 30 day or 40 day, for a 30 day trial. Um, uh, but you can purchase uh, it if you'd like. Um, it's essentially, uh, if you know anything about virtualization uh, and it, you know what VMware is, uh, Fusion is a really good product. Um, uh, if you don't want to spend the money though, uh, VirtualBox uh, seems to work too, however your mileage may vary. Um, I'm using Fusion because I had bad luck with VirtualBox. And again, you know, that's not speaking anything bad about VirtualBox. Uh, it just, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, with that said, if you don't know what virtualization is, uh, essentially all I'm going to be doing is taking the files that you would burn to a DVD, uh, uh, and I'm going to just be running them on my Mac, or on the Office Mac, uh, rather than uh, having to install it on a computer. Um, if you want to try uh, Windows 8 on your own, a uh, bit of warning for you, uh, it's recommended that you... Um, do not install it on a machine with other partitions. What that means is if you have Windows or Mac or something or Linux running on a computer, don't try to partition your hard drive out for it. Um, there's been some corruption issues. Um, you're safer in a, doing it in a virtual machine setting where you can at least bend the virtual machine worst come to worst, um, or uh, by doing it uh, on a clean machine. Okay, with that said, let me show you the machine specs. Um, I'm running Mac OS X 10.6.7 with 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, 4 gigs of RAM. Um, keep in mind too that some of my resources here are being used for this screencast, so uh, please bear with me. Um, I'll try to edit the video as best as I can to cut out a bunch of the lag. Alright, so uh, I'm gonna skip uh, showing everyone what the installation of Windows uh, 8 looks like. Um, if you want to learn how to do it um, and you have any questions, feel free to email me about it. But um, let's just go ahead and get started. And notice too that um, the machine preset is Windows 7 64-bit. Um, I just use it because there is no other Windows 8 preset and let's just start the machine. Okay, and uh, it's really interesting. Uh, Windows 8 uh, essentially is, to me anyway, uh, Windows 7 with a nice little screen interface on top of it. So you see we're loading up into the Windows Developer Preview splash screen. One of the first changes you'll notice is the difference in the, uh, the spin weighting um, gr uh, graphic. Uh, it's changed from the blue uh, to the white dots. I think that's a nice little aesthetic change. I like it a lot. Um, and you'll see those types of integrations throughout. And here we go. Um, this is the first thing you'll see when you log on to Windows 8. Um, it's the new lock screen. Uh, and again, keep in mind that uh, Windows 8 is essentially Windows 7 desktop, uh, mated with uh, Microsoft's uh, tablet interface, uh, or the Windows phone interface, the Metro theme. Um, and so they're supposed to be really good touch integration. However, it'll work well with a mouse. And so. Um, what you're supposed to do is actually click and drag up and you see that this lock screen unlocks. Okay, so this is something very similar to a phone. I can also hit the up key to unlock. Alright, and here is the uh, login screen. Now obviously I haven't put in a profile picture yet, but that's where it would come. Um, I'm not sure if we'd be able to change this color or not, but green is the scheme that we're given right now. Uh, you're given accessibility tools right here, and then right here uh, you have the shutdown restart menu. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and log on to my share. Okay, and again, you notice the welcome and the screen. Um, uh, and so please bear with me. I know this is kind of painfully slow, but I am virtualizing the machine and screencasting it. Okay, and when you're logged on, uh, this is your start menu. Um, and again, if you've ever used a Zune, uh, you have a Windows phone, or you're just familiar with the Metro theme, this is what you're seeing. Um, the Metro theme is essentially this nice little uh, tablet-esque interface. Okay, and so you'll be presented with menus. Um, you can see one of the first changes I made is I installed Google Chrome. Um, and these are essentially your programs. I can move these around uh, and I can create my layout. Um, 
excuse me, and uh, I can click here and move through and have different apps. Um, I can never get the apps to launch, and I don't know why that is yet. Um, but essentially, you have weather stocks tweet. Uh, Tweet at Rama is essentially like a, a built-in tweet deck type thing. Um, build, uh, this link will take you to um, basically the, the preview of the launch of Windows 8, all that kind of mess. Um, and if you're running the 64-bit developer version like I am, um, and I'm going to use the arrow keys here, you notice that as I click left key, I move. Um, you will have this menu here, which is the Windows, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Windows Developer thing. Uh, so you have uh, Visual Studio 11, uh, the Task Manager, uh, Blend, uh, Developer Command Prompt, and the Computer Menu. Uh, you have Remote Desktop Connections, and then Developer Apps, uh, something News Alarm. And again, I'm kind of mad because I never got any of this to work. Um, but essentially, you have all these developer apps. Um, and you'll be able to add apps from the new app store that comes with Windows 8 um, uh, as you move forward. Okay, um, let me show you a few of the things that have changed. Um, first off, let's go to the computer. Okay, you notice that when I click, uh, it opens up a new... Um, uh, it takes you to the desktop, and I'll show that later. And the first thing you're going to notice is that from Windows 7, the uh, the Explorer theme is similar, basically from the left side bar in here, and it's changed up top um, using this new tab style. Um, something that's been found a lot on the uh, Windows uh, materials, um, uh, like uh, I'm trying to think of a um, Windows Movie Maker, for example, is one of the first times I saw this, um, and you can see that uh, it's a lot nicer um, in, in terms of your ability to do different things like mapping network drives, adding network locations. It's all integrated in buttons. Um, Unselling programs. Let's just click here. Okay. This takes you to base, something that's pretty familiar to all of us. Okay. Um, the Windows uh, installer. Uh, yes, this wonderful little thing is still here too. System properties. And again, we see uh, a lot of the same uh, stuff from Windows 7. Okay, view allows you to change obviously the way this one is going to view uh, look. And again, if this is something that Microsoft's been rolling out essentially with uh, Office 2007, Office 2010, and the Windows Live 2011 uh, package that came out. Um, this is the new theme they've been shooting to, and it's all kind of pushed, um, pushed straight to uh, Windows 8. Okay, so that's that. Okay, I'm going to click right here, and there's no start menu, because remember, when I click, I'm going to go to this start menu. Okay, I think that was one of the weirdest things, just getting used to that. Um, I'm interested to see how that works out. Um, the task manager is a lot cleaner. I, I really like this. Um, it's really simple. If I wanted to see runtime tasks, I'm presented with runtime tasks, and that's it. Um, and if I want the more information, I can get it here. And they've really done a good job of just cleaning things up. And I get to see what's running up in the up ahead, what's running in the foreground, and what's running in the background. Okay. And my resources are nice and tabular. I I really do like that. Um, it just gives you a good idea of what you're dealing with. Okay. And they've also made a good job of making basically all the information inside Task Manager a lot more um, pleasing to the eye. So you get all your stats right here. You get a nice chart. Um, you get history of your applications. When was the last time you ran one of them? Um, what's the stats on them? Uh, the startup. What programs are going to be starting up? Users. How many users do you have? Um, details. So these are specific uh, functions or, or not functions, programs that are running. Um, and then services. So this is something like your Bluetooth services. Uh, I'm sure that they're going to have some like the print spooler services, um, uh, whole hard disk encryption services like they have in uh, previous versions of the operating system. Okay, so that's the task manager. I am a big fan of this. Thumbs up. I like it. Okay, take you back. 
All right, let's see. Um, and again, you know, we can go through all of these little links. I'm not going to bother with it too much. Uh, that's the developer end. Uh, and I think I'm going to say for the third time, I'm kind of mad that I can't get any of these apps to launch. Let me just try launching Note Space. Yeah, I click on it and nothing happens. And now um, I've heard um, and I've read that it's because of my screen resolution, and I find that just really weird. I think, honestly, it's just the ISO being buggy. Um, but then again, it is a developer preview, so I'm not really that mad at Microsoft for anything. Okay, I'm going to go back here and show you many features. If this is a start menu, you're expected to spend most of your time here and then actually go between your applications. Um, and this menu and not really spend too much time at this screen, the traditional desktop, okay? However, nothing has really changed here. It is uh, essentially a Windows 7 desktop. Um, and you also have the ability now, if I right click, um, to do a little bit more. Um, I can pin to the start menu now, um, and that means I used to be able to pin to the taskbar, but sometimes you want an application to pin to your start menu um, for for ease of access, uh, that's how you do it. Also, uh, you'd hit the Windows key to transfer back and forth from your start menu to your desktop. Okay, and let's see what else we got here. Opening the file and location, uh, sharing tools, um, I can send it to, blah, 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 um, properties. Let's see if this trick works. Um, if you're not familiar, if you hold down Shift and right click, um, in Windows 7 and in Windows 8 too, obviously, um, you get an extended menu. Um, so you have uh, open with options, copy as path, which is great if you're trying to find the relative file location of something. Basically, um, oh yeah, send to, you get more send to options. So let me show you how I did that. I'm just going to plain right click this time and show you that you get this menu. But if you want all the uber nerdy features, in, and if you're running Windows 7, I'm pretty sure this will work in Vista too. Um, hold down Shift and then right click, and you get the better right click menu. Ooh, the things you learn. Okay, so here we go. Um, so yeah, nothing too, too amazing or different right here. Okay, um, that's essentially the the desktop. All right, I'm going to show you Windows Explorer now. Again, uh, this is uh, we're, we're again looking at the newer uh, the newer ribbon style that Microsoft is seeming to go through in this release. Um, and this is straight from Office uh, 2010. The integration of the file menu, the file ribbon, or the file tab in the ribbon menu. Um, and again, you know, um, you have all sorts of nice little things, pinning things, opening in new windows, all that mess, okay? Um, sharing features, uh, I can, they just, uh, essentially they've made a lot uh, better job. I also like this feature, uh, burn to disk, so I can just, you know, go straight there. Um, again, but this is not too new in Windows 7, you have the same feature. Um, and... Uh, as I just kind of remember things as I'm explaining it out loud, um, there's also supposedly a feature that's supposed to allow you to mount ISO images. Uh, so you have a virtual CD drive. Now, if that's true and that works out freaking amazing, um, I cannot tell you how useful it is to mount ISO images because you don't need to burn a damn DVD. Excuse my French, but seriously, it can become a pain. I mount uh, ISO all the time and without uh, having to use a tool like Daemon Tools or something like that. Uh, Daemon Tools is great, but if the OS can support it uh, natively, um, always a plus, always a, always a great uh, feature to have. Okay, so that's uh, Windows Explorer. Um, the control panel is also redesigned and new. Uh, you see you get this nice little splash screen, and here you are, so you have uh, different features. I'm just going to scroll down. Okay. So let's just go to even more settings and see what they allow us to do and what they don't allow us to do. And oh, wow, look at that. You're presented with a Windows 7 um, control panel. Um, and again, I understand. I don't really expect them to reinvent the wheel too much. I am a fan of Windows 7. Um, I think it works wonderfully. Um, but yeah, essentially, you know, what they've tried to do is to just give uh, the old... Uh, uh, Windows a little bit of a facelift. Um, I'm going to click over here and personalize and so I can change my lock screen which is the image that we already talked about or the user tile right here. Um, 
you know, again, uh, just to kind of simplify it and to make it nice. Um, and to exit the control panel, I'm going to hit the Windows key once. There you go. And you get taken back to the start menu. Okay. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I can remember? Oh, um, again, like I was saying, Microsoft with this build, it seems to me like they're trying to really um, give you a one-stop shop in terms of menus. Um, and what they want you to do is to launch apps. Um, so rather than you going to Chrome and hitting news, um, apparently you're going to use <laughs> your news RSS reader right here. Um, but I was talking to some people, and uh, it's it's kind of hard to get people to switch, but it's interesting to see if people will. Um, same with weather, um, you know, stocks, socialite, which is supposed to be probably an all-in-one uh, encompassing social networking thing. Same thing with uh, the tweet at Rama. Um, it's an interesting concept. Um, uh, I'm more interested, however, I, I mean, this is neat and all, um, the menu, but um, as as a self-proclaimed uh, Windows power user or a, any operating system power user, uh, my uh, what I want to do is have more of the neat features. Um, so what I find more interesting uh, over this nice artsy whatever the hell start menu. I like um, they uh, Microsoft simplifying the ribbon um, so all of my Microsoft products have the same look and feel. It makes it easier for me to find things um, um, and also if they add features like uh, the ability to mount ISO images um, you know uh, and also the uh, the new task manager uh, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. All right, so there's your uh, basic sneak peek uh, at Windows 8. Um, it's it's pretty neat. Um, again, if you want to try it, uh, I recommend that you get the free 30-day trial of uh, uh, VMware Fusion. Um, however, if you want to run it on VirtualBox, uh, that's a good alternative too. Um, and, you know, I think for uh, considering... Uh, how great Windows 7 was uh, coming off of how terrible Windows Vista was. Um, I think Windows 8 is an interesting concept. And, you know, uh, 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 for anyone who's going to criticize Microsoft for making something like Windows 8, uh, uh, it's always understanding that software development and operating system development is such a, such a uh, cutthroat business, and uh, they're just trying to uh, stay one step ahead, I guess. Um, and so, you know... Interesting. Let's just say uh, that uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how the shutdown looks because, well, I showed you how the uh, boot up looks. So um, that's one thing that's kind of annoying. I can't just shut down from the start menu. I have to log off to do that. Now, I'm not sure if there is some reason for that. Um, I just find that annoying. And maybe there is a way to shut down straight from the start menu, and I just haven't found it yet. Um, you know, <laughs> whatever. I, I just find that a little annoying that I have to log off and then shut down. Also keep in mind that this might seem like a very long uh, log off time. Uh, and it's long because um, I'm running it off a virtual machine. Uh, what else can I say? It's virtualizing the whole kit and caboodle. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a lot of slack. Um, but that's it. That is your little... Um, preview of Windows 8. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you know anything else about Windows 8, um, uh, found some neat ticks, tips and tricks, or you just have an opinion about Windows 8, you want to tell me it sucks, you want to tell me Microsoft sucks, send me your comments. Please, please, please. I live off of your comments and emails. Uh, I love getting them. I love answering questions. And I'm just here to help you guys out. So until next time, guys, uh, enjoy reading the rest of the Johnsonian.